video, we are going to be tying a Frenchie, which is nothing more than just a variation of the hot spot on the pheasant tail. It is a very suggestive pattern. It's one of those patterns when trout, when the trout are not necessarily on the feed, and when you sometimes need that little extra trigger, that trigger point, a little hot spot. This is one of those patterns. I was one of my first patterns I go to. What we're going to start off with our hook. This particular hook is an Umpqua. It's a 200 BL. It's a competition style hook. Competition style meaning that it's barbless and it has a very long thin point. Very good hook penetration and once the fish is hooked it holds on to the fish very nicely. With that we are going to tie in a 764 tungsten brass bead to give us a little additional weight. To give us a little more weight we're going to take 15 thousandths lead wire to add a little bit more weight and we're going to make about 8 to 10 wraps on this hook shank. Pop that off, and what we're, this does adds weight, but also secures the tungsten bead. And just slide that up against the bead. Now for the thread, all I'm going to use is a fluorescent orange thread. This is going to be our one of our hot spots in the thread that actually finishes off the fly, but also helps us build the fly. So we're just going to take this. It's an eight dot. Tie that on. Cut it off, and then first and foremost, we want to secure the lead wire. No more than a, about 15 to 20 wraps secures it. For the tailing material, instead of using traditional pheasant tail for this material, or for the tailing, we're actually going to use a Coke de Leon feather. I like Coke de Leon because one thing, one, it's far more durable than pheasant tail or natural other tailing materials. It doesn't break or is not as brittle as it is. But then also, this has a really nice bar. You can see the little bars, the little uh, banding in this material, so it gives you that imitation that most mayflies have, that little banded, both in their legs and their tails. So all I'm going to do is just stroke out about eight to nine fibers, maybe a little less, it doesn't have to be exact, we're not building fine English furniture. And the tail is going to be approximately the same length as the hook shank. It doesn't have to be exact, but it's approximately the same length. And what I'm going to do to create this nice even taper, I have my lead wire, I'm going to tie this material down just on the other side of the lead wire and start to wrap back right where the bend begins to occur. Right before that, I put the brakes to it. Cut off the excess. What we're going to do here, just use a little fine gold wire. Extra fine. This is going to give us that nice little segmentation. So I'm going to tie this material in. Again, I'm going to start to the point right below where the lead wire is tied in and wrap back so I don't create too much bulk. For the body, simple pheasant tail. There's different colors of pheasant tail. Natural is one of my favorites, but depending on the insect you're trying to imitate, if you're trying to imitate a darker nymph, chocolate brown or like an olive will work. But for most part, natural pheasant works fine. And what we're going to do for this size 14 fly, I'm going to maybe take 8 to 10 strands off. Pheasant tail has a taper. So what I want to do is I want to go from thick to thin. So what I'm going to do is just using my thumb, I switch this around. So I tie in with the tips. And I'm just going to trim the tips. So I have a nice little area to tie in. Again, right behind the point where I actually tied in the lead wire, I'm going to tie my pheasant tail and secure that right on top of the hook shank. Wrap back, secure it, and then proceed to wrap forward right to the bead. With pheasant tail, what I'm going to do now just take this material and just start wrapping. And this is the key to any type of body material, where especially a brittle material like the pheasant tail. What I want is for durability and then also I want to see that cross section. I want to see the rib actually stand out. So what I, it's important to remember is with this pheasant tail, what I want to do in order for this rib to work and stand out, I'm, I'm going to be tying my pheasant tail in at a 45 degree angle in this direction and when I do my, my rib, I'm going to do a 45 in the opposite direction so it crisscrosses gives us that nice segmentation but also holds up and allows the, the, the pheasant tail to be a little bit more durable during the take of a fish. So all I'm going to do now, get that thread out of the way, is continue wrapping. Wrap at a 45 away, here, all the way up to the bead. This is one of those very simple suggestive patterns that we came across from the French, and the reason why it's called the Frenchie is the first people that actually started using this modification, as far as we know, were the Frenchies. 
uh, we had a number of anglers. We had the U.S. Youth Fly Fishing Championships in Pennsylvania, and I watched a lot of the French kids fish, and the kid in particular that won the competition, afterwards everyone was excited to see his pattern, and they thought they were going to see all these super realistic, you know, gills sticking out, and when he came back to he had a CNF fly box, a three tray, and it was full of nothing but these Frenchies. And he said, this is my confidence fly. I fish this fly anywhere around the world. So it's just one of those good all-around patterns that work anywhere. So what I'm going to do now, once I secure and tie in my pheasant tail, I'm going to create my rib. Again, I tied the, my, the pheasant tail at an angle this direction. What I want to do is go in the opposite direction. So it crisscrosses and stands out and creates some durability. So I'm going to angle it back. Now you can see how that is actually standing out against the pheasant tail, giving us that nice contrast, but also adding some durability to the fly. Once I wrap up to the bead, all I'm just going to simply do is just tie off the fine wire, two or three wraps, and then cut. For our hot spot, for half of it, all we're going to use, in this case, is a nice dub UV shrimp pink. It's one of my favorite colors, and all we need is just, as they say, less is more. We're just going to take out just a little pinch, just a tiny little pinch. Wrap this right on top, dub this in. Make sure it's a nice tight wrap. We don't want this unraveling, so even using your fingers to bind this material down. But that's all you're going to need, not much. All I'm going to do is just basically make four or five wraps right and tight to the bead. That's it. Once you make finish that up, I'm just going to take my fluorescent orange thread and finish off that fly. And This is going to be the other part of the hot spot. You can see the red thread building a little bit, right to the point where it's almost about the same height as the bead. And then as soon as that's the case, I do a whip finish, tie that off. One more time for safe measure, and finish. And right there is a Frenchie. One of those good all-around suggestive patterns that sometimes will save the day when nothing else works.